Hey, Newbie Dan here. After I posted my video last week on making runners, a number of you commented about the problems you have with either Craftsman or Ryobi table saws that have tabbed miter slots like this. So I thought I'd help you guys out. I managed to get my hands on this Ryobi table saw for a couple of days, and I'm going to use it to help show how you can make runners for your tab miter slots. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. As I'm sure you already know, the problem is these tabs that stick out into the miter slots. You can't use a normal runner in these slots. So we'll be making a runner that's shaped kind of like an inverted T, like this. If you're new to cutting runners, you should watch my previous video on the subject. There's a link in the description below. You may need to know some of that information in order to understand everything in this video. Here's our goals. First, the bottom portion of the runner needs to be just wide enough to fit snugly in the miter slot with no side-to-side -side movement, yet still be able to slide up and down the track. This one ended up being too loose, but it's good enough for the demo. Second, it needs to have rabbits cut into the top to allow it to pass between the tabs. Third, the neck needs to be long enough so when it's attached to a sled base, there's enough room for the tabs to slide between the base and the bottom portion of the runner. And fourth, it really should be as tall as you can make it without it dragging on the bottom of the miter slot. That's because the rabbits end up making this portion of the runner a little fragile. It's not real bad, but the thicker you can make it, the better. I recommend using hardwood, not plywood, for this runner. You can try plywood if you want, but I'm not sure how well it'll hold up. Let me know in the comments if you do try plywood. Measure the width of your miter slot and check it in a couple of places to make sure it's about right. I got 0.834 inches, but yours may be different. I'm using a piece of maple here. It's thicker than the depth of the miter slot, and I'll cut it down later. The grain really should be running vertically, because wood expands more along the grain, but this is all I've got for the demo. Trim one side to make sure it's straight. Then set your fence just a little wider than the miter slot, and cut off the other side. After double checking that you didn't cut it too narrow, start sneaking up on the cut. See my previous video for more information. But basically, move the fence over a little, trim some of the end, and see if it fits. If it doesn't, repeat the process. When it looks good, trim the entire runner. Then measure the depth of the miter slot. I got around 0.292 inches. Cut the runner just a tad shorter than that number. Next is the rabbits. They need to go in far enough this direction to fit between the tabs, and deep enough this direction so that when you lift the runner up against the bottom of the tabs, the top of the runner extends above the tabletop. Exactly how much above the table it needs to extend is something you'll have to play with. To figure out how far in the rabbits need to go, here's the formula. Width of the miter slot minus gap between the tabs divided by 2. So measure the width of the miter slot. For some reason, I got a slightly different number this time, but whatever. This time it's 0.840 inches. Then measure the gap between the tabs. I got 0.705. The difference between 0.840 and 0.705 is 0.135, so that means each side needs a rabbit about 0.07 inches or so. A small room for error is okay. Remember, this is on this saw. Yours may vary. At this point, I figured the thickness of the tabs is about the thickness of my blade, so I set my fence's width, so I'll be cutting away about a blade's worth. I'll be more exact in a moment. Set your blade height for the size of the rabbit, which for me is about 0.7 inches. Then cut the rabbit on both sides. Try it in the slot and see if it fits. For me, there's plenty of room horizontally for in between the tabs, but it won't quite fit under the tabs yet, so I need to cut a little deeper than a blade's width. I go back and move the fence in a little more and try again. This time it fits under the tabs just fine. I lift the runner up and check the top of it, and it's shorter than the tabletop. It needs to extend above the tabletop, so I have to go back and do it again one more time. This time, when I lift up the runner against the bottom of the tabs, the top of the runner extends above the tabletop, so I'm good to go. Now it's time to attach the runner to the sled base. For this type of runner, I recommend using machine screws, not glue. There's a pretty good chance you'll need to remove the runner at least once while you're getting the fit right. There's also a chance you may break the runner when using it. So using screws allows you to replace the runner easily. Also, you don't want any glue squeeze out in the rabbit holes. Slots. Whatever. 
I'm going to use quarter inch machine screws with 20 threads per inch that are a half inch long. My sled base is a half inch plywood, so after drilling the counter bore, these end up being the perfect length. And I'll be using these washers, and possibly some lock washers. We'll see if they're needed. So you're going to need a tap and drill set for the type of machine screws you're going to use. They're pretty cheap. This one from Amazon should work just fine. There's a link in the description below. You'll also need a Forstner bit. I'm using a 7 8 inch bit. It needs to be big enough for the washers you'll be using with some wiggle room. I typically only use two screws for sleds this size. With larger sleds like this, I use more screws. You need to figure out where you want the screws. It's best if they don't end up under the sled's fences, like what happened here. Mark your runner to show where to drill the holes. Make sure to put the marks on the side without the rabbits. It's also a good idea to put arrows on the runners so you know which direction they go in the miter slot. Then mark the position for the holes exactly so you know where to drill. Place your sled base on your table saw where you want it to be when you're using it. Make two marks where the miter slot is. You don't have to be perfect, just reasonably close. Turn over the sled base and use a square of some kind to draw two lines where the miter slot is. I forgot to press record the first time, so I'm drawing the lines again. Now put a backing board under the sled base, under the miter track lines. Take your runner and turn it over so the rabbits face down and the arrows point towards the front of the sled base. Then position it between the lines. Again, you don't have to be perfect, just close. Then clamp everything down. Use a small drill bit to drill pilot holes where the screws go. Drill all the way through both the runner and the sled base. Try to keep the drill as vertical as possible. Go ahead and unclamp the runner and remove the sled base. Then clamp the runner down again to the backing board. Using the drill bit that came with the tap set, drill the holes in the runner where the pilot holes are and try to keep the drill as straight up and down as you can. Perfection isn't needed, but don't be sloppy. Now put the tap in your drill and make sure your drill is on a slow setting if you have one. Clamp the runner down and slowly tap the hole. You don't have to be super slow, but don't just blast away. You can check to see the screw fits, but it should. Repeat with the other hole. Now get your sled base and clamp it to a backing board with the top facing up. That's the side without the miter slot lines you drew previously. Using a Forstner bit, make a counterboard deep enough for the screw head and washer, and possibly a lock washer, to fit down in while not making it too deep. As I said before, I'm using a 7 8 inch Forstner bit. Obviously, you need to drill a counterbore for each screw hole. Now expand the remainder of the pilot holes. Use a bit that's bigger than your threaded holes. For me, my holes are quarter inch screws, so I'm using a 3 8 inch bit for these holes. Okay, we're ready to attach the runner and see how we did. Attach the runner with machine screws and washers, but don't tighten them all the way down. The machine screws need to be short enough so they don't stick out of the bottom of the runner. If they do, you'll scratch up your miter slot. Been there, done that. And make sure the tops of the screws are below the top of the sled base. Now try to slide the runner into your miter slot. Hopefully it fits right. If not, you may need to make adjustments. I'll line up the base with the front of the table saw so I'm relatively square. Then tighten down the screws. If they don't seem like they'll hold very well, use some lock washers. Double check to make sure the screws are still below the surface of the sled. Mine aren't, so I'd have to drill out the counter bore a little more. Back at the table saw, try sliding your sled back and forth. If it works, you're pretty much done. You didn't really think it worked the first time, did you? But if it did, leave a comment and brag about it. If it's only just a little too tight, it might help if you wax the sled bottom and runner. Otherwise, go back and adjust things until it works. If you get totally stuck, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do to help. This video is part of an ongoing series about table saw sleds, which includes crosscut sleds, box joint sleds, runners, fences, or whatever else I can think of or you can suggest. So make sure you keep an eye open for other videos in this series. Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down, click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!